Welcome, I'm Pastor Porch of the Fenton United Methodist Church. This is the sermon for April 19th, 2020. It's, it's titled, My Soul's Perspective. Today the sermon will be followed by Holy Communion, so get the elements ready now, uh, bread and juice. You can use any kind of bread uh, or crackers or a chip, um, a hot dog bun, hamburger bun, just whatever you have on hand that, that works mostly. Juice can be grape, orange, apple, wine, or whatever you have. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and pause it if you need to get the, those elements together, and uh, then you can click it back on and uh, play as we begin. Our first scripture is from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of eternity into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from beginning to end. The second is from the Lord's Prayer. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our last scripture is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Have you ever heard the phrase, they're so heavenly minded, they're of no earthly good? Perspective is important in both place and time. You have to know where you are in the big picture. That's why perspective is critical. It's like being a new parent. When that happens, you're immediately under this barrage of, hey, there's somebody else in the house and they have demands and they're not going to play along nicely. Uh, they want what they want when they want it. And there's not a whole lot you can do about that. So you, you have to learn to take another person into account in all the stuff that you have to get. You look at the kind of things that parents are told. If you don't have this, you don't have what you need. It requires an adjustment. It's a big adjustment. A new Christian must adjust to take God into account. That is, God isn't just something that they're going to uh, communicate with, learn about, or deal with just for a few hours on Sunday. God is to be a part of their life, every aspect of their life. And so they have to think in a new way. We have to take on a new way of thinking and uh, our attitudes, our behaviors, our uh, habits all come into question, and it's quite an adjustment. Blaise Pascal said, There's a God-shaped void in every person that only God can fill. There's a a part of us that we try to fill with other things, but only God can truly fill it properly. In the scripture that we read from the Lord's Prayer, as it is in heaven, means being heavenly-minded. Being heavenly-minded is not ignoring the here and now. Obviously, For some people, that's what they think they are supposed to do to be heavenly minded. But that's not it. It's being more realistic by gaining a fuller and more accurate perspective of here and now on earth in the context of eternity. So what's the difference? Being earthly minded means focusing on the place and the moment. It's living in the now completely isolated from the past and the present. It's living for what we are feeling or wanting or desiring at the moment without any context to it. It's living without perspective. We live without perspective of the past and the present. We live without the perspective of the here and the there. As it is in heaven is tied in the prayer to let it be on earth as it is in heaven. So that let it be on earth is important. So you see, being heavenly minded is not a rejection of one part of reality for the other part. It is a both and way of thinking. It is not an either or. And for some of us, there are moments and situations in our life where 
It is either or. or. But when we think about being heavenly minded, it means that we are now taking heaven into our perspective and we're shaping our earthly perspective, our earthly mindedness, we're transforming it into heavenly mindedness because we're putting God first. God is at the center and that changes everything. So how do you picture heaven? It matters. Is uh, heaven something that uh, maybe you learned when you were watching cartoons as a kid? Fat babies playing harps on clouds? Uh, maybe it's uh, from looking at those old um, paintings from the Middle Ages. Maybe you imagine it as sitting in a worship service, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, I like worship, but I don't think we're meant to sit in a worship service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Perhaps it's laying around in a recliner with your favorite snack. A lot of times people, when they think of heaven or when they think what, what they've decided heaven should be, it's a, it's a bunch of earthly delights on steroids. And that's not really heaven either. It's like having an unchallenged assumption. We don't realize that sometimes the images that we have in our mind of heaven is insufficient. It's distorting our understanding of heaven. When we read scripture, we're misreading it, or we're, we're putting things in there that aren't there, we're leaving things out that are there, because we've got the wrong mental pictures. Wrong mental pictures limit us from seeing reality as it is, or from seeing heaven as it will be. Heaven is certainly these things. It's being fully with God. It's a relational context. It, it is a relational reality. And so being fully with God is the key, I think, to understanding what heaven is. Heaven isn't so much a location, but who you're with. Second thing I think that's uh, certainly laid out in scriptures is that heaven is an elimination of pain and suffering. There's a physical reality to heaven. When we get our resurrection bodies, they are not unbodies. They're just bodies that are no longer limited in the way our physical bodies are now. They're a whole new brand of physical material. It's not subject to the second law of thermodynamics. It's not subject to um, the failings of age and the decay. It is something that is now eternal with us. And so we receive eternal bodies just as Jesus did when he was resurrected. We're being at peace with God and one another. This is the social reality, I think, of heaven. There's a sense in which we are right with God. We are right with one another. We're at peace with ourselves as well. And finally, I think heaven is being sustained by God's grace. Heaven is no longer the kind of thing that we have to struggle with day in and day out. The, we are, we are separated out or freed is maybe another way of saying it of the temporary temporal kind of problems that we have and that's the eternal part of heaven it's that sense in which heaven is it continues forever because it's based only on God's grace we're no longer trapped in the limitations of a world that has been affected by sin if we live our lives in the perspective of heaven our lives on earth will be better. We will connect with God here and now, then and there. Sounds almost like a Dr. Seuss book, doesn't it? Communion reminds us and recharges us in that connection. It recharges that connection that we have with God and it gives us a, a better glimpse of what heaven will be like where we will have all things in direct communion with God. Also, we'll be able to endure temporary problems and pain when we are heavenly minded, when we have a proper view of heaven. We won't focus on the size of our problems. We'll focus on the size of our God. So it doesn't mean that we won't experience temporary problems. It doesn't mean that we won't experience pain or frustrations or dilemmas or problems. 
it means that they're now in a new context. And so whatever it is that we face, whatever problem that we face, the griefs that we face are all seen in that larger perspective of heaven. Also, a proper perspective of heaven allows us to enrich our relationships with God and others, knowing that these are the eternal things that we want to invest in. These are the things that will last forever, these relationships. We also are able to enjoy material blessings without worshiping them. That's the tricky part. Heaven mindfulness eliminates wrong attachments. There are some attachments that are good. Not all attachments are, though. And when we get attached to material things and stuff that's passing away, we run into a problem. So there needs to be a certain amount of clarity of the temporal versus the eternal. Some things have temporary value and other things have eternal value. Even in this world, those things of temporary value, some things, value, some things have a value that passes rather quickly. If somebody gave me a million dollars worth of bananas, that would be pretty cool. Until I started to think, what am I going to do with all these bananas? I've got very temporary, limited time to do something with them, to transfer them into another type of wealth that will last longer. Ultimately, as Christians, we want to transfer the things that are passing away, the material things of this world, into wealth that never passes away. So we take the gifts and graces, the wonderful blessings that we've received with God, and we invest those in things that never pass away, our relationship with God, our relationships with other people. These are the things that we can't waste time on. Um, We will always be spending good time when we're spending time in those things. So we want to make sure that we take the things that are passing and move them into the things that are eternal. That's another thing that happens when we have a proper perspective of heaven. And then finally, I think it enables us to love fully. That is, we can uh, live in love in who we are, loving people, and how and what we do. So our love is not just something that we feel inside, but it's acted out in our behavior, in our words, in the things that we do. And most importantly, in the ways in which we touch other people's lives. We start thinking more long-term, less short-term. And so our love is not about what will get, will make that person feel good about me today or make me feel good about that person today, but what will uh, happen to their lives? What will happen to my life? How will I act in a loving way that will make my life better, make their life better, that will please God in the long run, not just for the moment. Perspective breaks the power of fear and shame, and this allows us to love better. So how's your soul? As we have been asking that question over the weeks, we're kind of wrapping up our soul series, and uh, it's time for now a little bit of soul food. Uh, Let us join God and one another at the Lord's table. So if you haven't had a chance to get your elements, get your elements now. Set them out, uh, your elements of bread and juice or whatever variation you have on that. And stop the video now to get those ready. Um, And then when they're ready, you can begin again. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray silently.
Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. We're now at the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. And then all of us together, let's say, we give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn from Revelation. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. And together, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will share in the elements, and I would encourage you to uh, take your bread. I'm using a, a tortilla. Seems the most like a matzah to me. And take a piece of the bread that you have. Break it off or depending on what you're using, a cracker, you can just use the whole cracker. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Lord, continue to revive us in our souls through your body and blood, through your real and true presence. Work Within us, work upon us, 
and work through us, that others may know that you are alive and working in the world today. Amen. And now let us pray our final prayer and blessing. Be at peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This concludes our communion service. I'm glad that you participated with us through the sermon and the service and hope that it was a blessing to you.